So let's take on the big question here. What is dopamine? This is a problem because it's great that everybody knows about dopamine now. There's so many songs I'm collecting in my Spotify albums about all these songs about dopamine, but everybody kind of gets it wrong. Everybody says dopamine is about pleasure. It's about, you know, this hedonic kind of response. It's, it's what's good. That's not what dopamine is. Dopamine is about learning. Dopamine is a learning drug. And I'm going to learn you about learning right now, okay? So we're going to figure out what is the difference between pleasure and learning. There's pleasure in learning about what the difference is between learning and pleasure. Get meta. And uh, the, the key result comes from uh, these amazing recordings, very hard to do, uh, made by Wolfram Schultz in Monkeys. Um, and this uh, kind of diagram here, which is shown so many times and is so impactful, uh, really kind of fits perfectly with a mathematical formulation that had been uh, developed many years earlier by Rich Sutton and Andy Barto. Uh, again, one of these classic early examples where computational modeling approaches anticipated exactly how the system works, really the kind of Heb uh, version uh, in the context of the kind of reinforcement learning world, um, uh, really understanding how this system should work mathematically. So let's take a look at what this diagram is telling us, and then we'll see what the difference is between learning and pleasure. So here's, here's the kind of pleasure side of it that makes people think that dopamine is pleasure. If you do not have any reason to expect a reward, uh, then and you get this reward delivered to you kind of out of the blue you get dopamine firing and that's what we're seeing here there was no condition stimulus which is if you remember back to your kind of classical conditioning paradigm uh, a bell or a tone that that fires in advance of a upcoming reward and that uh, if you don't have any kind of alert alerting you to that you're going to the fact that you're going to get this reward then the reward itself kind of is unexpected and it gives you this dopamine. But the critical finding is in this next graph here. This is, the, this is where the money happens, okay? You get the CS, you have a tone, it tells the monkey in this case, a reward will be coming very soon, okay? And look what happens to the dopamine. When you get that very same reward that previously gave you a nice robust firing of dopamine neurons, you get nothing. And just to make sure we're on the same page here, each line is a uh, single trial. This is when the dopamine neurons fired, these little dots. And then the histogram on the top is essentially just the accumulation or sum of all the dots at a, each given point in time. And so you can see here that uh, there just really is no firing at the time of reward. Dopamine is not about reward. Let me say that again. Dopamine is not about reward. It's not about pleasure. It's about differences between predicted reward or expected reward and what you actually get. It's about unexpected rewarding outcomes. That's the difference. And the key point connection with learning is once you learn to expect the reward, you don't need to learn anything more about that and you're done learning. And then you don't need dopamine because dopamine, again, is a learning drug. It's a drug that controls the learning in the basal ganglia for what to do and what not to do. And once you've learned it, once you're able to predict that the reward is gonna come, then it's actually really important computationally that you don't keep hammering away and trying to get the system to, to keep learning. Once it's learned, it's learned. And I'll try to stop reiterating this because you see if I keep saying the same thing over and over again, it's annoying, right? <laughs> so once you've learned it, you got it. You don't want me to keep saying it, okay? It's the same thing with dopamine. Once you've learned it, you're done, okay? And it's the same thing with news. Uh, tell me the news, right? Don't tell me the weather, uh, whatever. Um, you know, you want to know what's different. And dopamine is telling you if it's predictable, if you know it already, eh, I don't care. That's old. That's history. 
I want to know what's unpredictable, what's new, what I, what I don't know about. That's learning. And so that's what we see right here. This CS, this condition stimulus in this case, is unpredictable. A monkey has no idea when that tone is going to go off. But when it does, you actually get a response to that news signal. This is like a news flash. News flash. Now you're all excited, right? Because you didn't know that you were going to get a news flash. And then the actual news that comes in later, whatever, the actual message, the actual reward is kind of like whatever. So, uh, and then the complement of this is also very important, which is you get the news flash, you get this kind of alert that says something good is going to happen, you think, right? So you get the tone that tells you that a reward is coming, but now the evil scientist says, sorry, no reward, right? So here, Wolfram just said, no monkeys, I'm not going to give you this little drop of juice that you've been expecting. And you see the neurons are very sad, right? They just stop firing. Um, and this is the dip in dopamine that drives that kind of no-go learning that we talked about in the previous slide. That's what we're talking about as this kind of dip. And this is what happens when you don't get something that you expect. And uh, over here you can see this is the case of the burst when you get this unexpected thing. Um, but if you expect it again, you don't continue to learn about it. So this is really the critical thing about dopamine is that it's coding for unexpected things and this also uh, means that um, as you get older and learn about the world and have a better kind of model and expectations about what's going to happen you don't get your dopamine anymore it's really sad and so uh, it's it's actually this this dopamine stuff really has a lot understanding how it actually works has a lot of important implications for life Okay, um, it's why expectations are so important, right? So we're all about, do we expect something good or not, right? And if you set a really low expectation, then you prevent disappointment, okay? But you also don't get that nice little kind of burst at the, at the time because you don't get that kind of expectation dopamine. So it's not like that's actually a great strategy, but it is really interesting if you just look in the world how much of how we evaluate everything is relative to expectation. And nowhere is that more obvious than in politics, especially these days. You have situations where basically behavior that you know used to be completely outside the norm of expectation, now people don't think anything about it. And so uh, that's all about kind of adapting our expectations and you can just see it very vividly and so uh, this is very real um, you can see it uh, all over the place